Artificial intelligence is extremely popular right now due to the recent explosion of interest from ChatGPT and similar tools. But there's still a world of opportunity with Microsoft's API-based cognitive services for easy AI implementation. Today, we're going to discuss Azure Custom Vision in the vision category of cognitive services and even use a real example that we created for our recent book, Practical Guide to Azure Cognitive Services. Now, if you're interested, let's go. Okay, now, before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you for all of the support and engagement for my videos, as my goal is really to help you to prepare for using some of these technologies and some of the concepts to make you successful in what you're trying to achieve. Please, please, please like, comment, share, and subscribe these videos, this channel, to help out as much as you can. As I mentioned, today we're going to go through a full example of using Azure Custom Vision. Okay, so as I mentioned, today we're going to go through a full example of using Azure Custom Vision service as we built for the book we recently published on AI and Azure Cognitive Services. The example we built follows the flow of a quality assurance process, as you can see, for ensuring top quality lobster tails that are produced and then sold into the marketplace. We will talk through building our own custom model for determining if a lobster tail is considered good or bad by using an image captured on a production line. We will also talk about some of the other features of the tool. Before we get started, let's discuss what Azure Custom Vision actually is. When we talk about what Azure Custom Vision is, it's really just an image recognition service that lets you build, deploy, and improve your own image identifier models or labels for images based on what is in the image. Each label represents a classification or an object. A classification will add one or more labels to an entire image as it's on the screen. An object detection will go steps further by identifying the coordinates of the objects that are detected within the image with the appropriate labels or tags applied. Now, as we talk about these labels, Custom Vision allows you to specify your own labels and train custom models to detect them. There are several model types that can be created based on what is expected in the image, such as landmarks, a company brand, named entities, food, and so forth and so on. Custom Vision uses a machine learning algorithm to analyze images. You submit sets of images that have and don't have the visual characteristics you're looking for. Then you label your images with your own custom labels, or again, tags, at the time of submission. Now, when we talk about training our custom models, the algorithm trains to the data that you're providing and then calculates its own accuracy by testing itself on the same images. Once you've trained your model, you can test, retrain, and eventually use that model in your image recognition app to classify images or detect objects. You can also use custom vision through three main ways. You can use it through a client library using the SDK. You can use a REST API to connect into it, or you can use the custom vision web portal, which we will be using as part of the demonstration in this video. You can also call the API directly or export the model to a device or a container for low latency and offline scenarios. Now, custom vision is optimized to quickly recognize major differences between images. So you can start prototyping your model with a very small amount of data. It's generally a good start to work with 50 images per label, and you want to have 
that number of images balanced across the various labels. This will help you prevent overstuffing, which can lead to poor performance of your machine learning model. Now, the other nice thing is that Custom Vision supports TensorFlow, which is probably the most popular open source platform for machine learning. And it helps you to develop and train machine learning models that you're going to use. There is comprehensive security and compliance as an Azure standard using encryption in motion or at rest. And the way that the costing works is based on how many transactions you're doing, how frequently you train your model, how you retrain your model, um, how long that takes, the number of images you're using, um, how many images are being stored, right? Because we're talking about a lot of components, including compute, um, storage, networking, security, and other elements in order to build a full production capability. Now, we're going to jump into a full demonstration of the Custom Vision portal found at customvision.ai. Okay, so after we log into the portal, customvision.ai, now, just as a caveat, you do need an Azure account in order to make that work. Um, but this is the page that will show up. It'll give you any existing projects and the ability to create a new project um, as soon as you log in. And for example, when we log into a new project, as I mentioned before, there are some pre-canned models um, that are designed to um, be more specific to the area of uh, discussion that you're working on uh, when, when you're creating your image machine learning model. So uh, you can see here, we've got a few general models. You've got a food model, landmark, retail, and then you've got the compact models. Uh, and the compact models are, are purely for that, compact, so that you can put them on, say, uh, a smartphone or something like that, where um, the model is going to be uh, used locally within those devices. You're also going to name it, add a description. You're going to create resources. Now, you'll either have resources available or you'll have to create a new resource. Um, that's basically going to give you the compute to train the model and, and you know, sort of all of those related items. Um, again, with, with the, the various domains that you can choose from, uh, each of them has its own specific area that um, is designed for different things. And, and in our case, um, we, we actually just used a general model uh, because it wasn't really classified as food per se. And so we went ahead and, and built that model. Now, if we click into the model that we've already created, um, you'll see that it will essentially um, open the model. Uh, it'll show me all of the examples of the tails that are there. As you can see, I put 45 bad tails and 45 good tails. You've got sort of the images that are already included. Um, in this case, I have one where uh, tails are untagged. Um, so I can use what's known as the smart labeler. Um, where by getting suggested tags and it will go through. Um, you can set all the untagged images um, or, or spe specify if you're using a lot of images, you know, if there's less or a certain number at a time. Uh, and then you can run your, your instance and it will go ahead and uh, label those for you based on the model you currently have. I'm not going to do this because it'll take time and, and more editing. Huh. So, these are the uh, examples that have not yet been added in. And so if we go uh, back to our tagged images uh, and we can specify, okay, I wanna look at the bad tails. You can see that we got some flippers missing, we got a little bit of cracks cracks going on, cracks, right? So, so those would be considered bad tails, whereas the good tails are much cleaner, right? They have uh, all the same fanned out um, portions, uh, you know, there's no cracks in the shell. We've got them going in various directions so that it can define what uh, a good or bad lobster tail would look like. From there, after we've created our model and trained our model, um, now we're going to look at basically the, the different um, aspects of the model training itself, including the precision, the recall, and um, the AP.
So if we look at each of these, right, it's, you know, the precision is going to tell you the number if a tag is predicted by your model, how likely is it to be right? So, you know, if we're going to predict a tag on an image, um, we are expecting to be 89% right based on the model that we have. Our recall has the identical number, uh, and it will tell you, you know, basically out of the tags that should be predicted correctly, what percentage of your model correctly finds. So again, 89%. So that's probably why the precision and the recall are, are matched. And then finally, the AP, um, or, or the performance, if you will, um, it, it basically looks at the precision um, and the recall thresholds. And you can see that that's close to 100% as a result. Now down here, it gives me them based on each of the tags. And so our performance actually went down a little bit on the, on the good tails from an AP standpoint compared to the bad tails. Um, you know, and, and so that could be related to a whole bunch of different features. Uh, because I've already created this and published it, um, now it can, it can offer me to unpublish the model um, if I wanted to, but if it, were, if it were a new model, a newly trained model if I wanted to, you can see up here that I could retrain the model based on this information or add more images in and then do a retraining. I've got my prediction URL, which is uh, what I connect to from the outside. So if I want to feed an image into um, the model to uh, see whether it would be considered good or bad, which is basically the example that we use in the book, um, we, you know, uh, we are able to then um, use um, that, uh, that API to be able to test our images. And then finally, um, under our predictions, um, you know, we essentially are, are looking at um, how to uh, better improve the model. Now, as, as we speak about uh, in, in the chapter in the book, we, we actually do this through um, uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, and in fact, the example that we're using is the, the person on the production floor uses a physical button to say whether or not um, the, the example that gets called out is a false positive and it should be uh, considered a good tail when it's flagged as a bad tail or vice versa. So when we look at all of that, uh, you know, those are the areas that we can add in some details. We can go back to our home here. Um, we can look at any of our projects. Let's just go back into our project. Um, and then from there, like I said, we can, we can retrain the model by adding new, um, new examples, uh, or we can run a quick test. Now, what the quick test does is it allows us to look at another image and it allows us to determine, you know, whether or not it's, it's a good or bad image. This is through the interface. You can also do this through uh, the API or through the SDK. Um, this is just a quick and easy way to not only um, build and train a model uh, as well as retrain, but also test images against the model and do some, some um, offhand testing that might be um, uh, beneficial to the users or the consumers to make sure that we're, we're looking at the right stuff. Finally, when we look at our configuration, um, we've got our resource ID, which will block out um, the details of this. Uh, it, we're looking at the pricing tier, um, the, the name of the information where this is all stored, uh, the keys, you know, uh, the endpoint that they would connect to, uh, you've got the project IT, some of the other details here, you use the general A1 domain, um, which made the most sense for this specific example um, by capturing those images. Uh, I have uh, usage um, areas, right? You, you get more quota, you um, use an Azure account, create uh, a, another uh, project, you know, to get, to get more um, examples and, and more ability to uh, expand some of these uh, soft caps. And then of course you can look at the documentation, you can kind of go in and look at support and all those types of things. So that should give you a pretty good overview of what the portal looks like. It's very simple to use, it's very quick to create your own custom machine learning model. Okay, great. Hopefully you found that interesting. Hopefully I was able to answer some of the questions. And even more importantly, hopefully you realize how quick and easy it is to get started with custom vision to build your own machine learning custom vision model. 
Hopefully you found this beneficial across the board. And if you're really interested in the full code, you can buy the book. We released it in packed and it goes through this and about eight or nine other examples where we're deploying cognitive services for everyday use, whether you're a small business or an enterprise. Thank you again for all of your support. Once again, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel to keep us going and building more content for you. Thanks again and have a great day. Bye.